Well, good morning. It is Sunday, December 5th. Welcome back to the garden. We're going to start lesson number three. Critters, or biology, or if you were in a manufacturing setup, hiring the labor. Now, I was talking to my friend the other day, and we were talking about manufacturing processes, and that's just like farming. Assuming you have your factory set up, which would basically be your farm, and you're producing widgets, say corn, and you're producing corn every year, and you get a little bit of corn, but you're really working, you're really struggling, you got to take a look at it just like setting up a manufacturing line. Is there ways to eliminate some of the waste? Are there things that you're doing that you don't need to be doing? Are there things that you're doing that is making it harder for you? Are you doing things that are making you go backwards? Now, if we recap just a little bit, we've already looked at dirt and soil, and that would be the raw materials. And today, we're basically going to do a hiring fair. We're going to look at the labor needed. We want to attract the best candidates to get the job done. So in a garden, what would your labor force consist of? That would be the biology. That would be the critters. So what critters do the work in the garden? Bacteria and fungus, protozoa, nematodes, microarthropods, ciliates. But we only want to attract the good ones. There are bad ones. And how do you attract the labor force you need? Business just like in the garden. It's salary, it's compensation, it's the actual work environment. The workforce that we want, they like organic matter. So I'm laying out a little organic matter to see if we can attract some decent help. Just like all manufacturing, you need a variety of different workers to do different jobs. So who are the critters that we need? One of the biggest problems we have on farms and gardens is compaction. So our labor force needs to be something that's going to counteract that compaction. So we need bacteria and fungus. How the world is a bacteria or fungus going to help reduce compaction? because they're gonna be the ones building the structure, the structure that allows the air and the water to get down into that soil, to allow the roots to grow. Okay, so to make this work, we've already talked about dirt, which is our raw material, which would be our building blocks, which would be the blocks to the building, to the house, however you wanna look at it. But within that house, you have to have hallways, you have to have windows, you have to have spaces, you have to have the living room, whatnot. The micro aggregate, the little pieces of sand, silt, clay, pebbles, and even some of the organic matter, the bacteria makes glue and it makes microaggregate, which would be your building blocks. Then the fungus kind of pulls those building blocks together, kind of like cementing a brick house together, nailing boards together, however you want to look at that. Now those are the ones that, so your bacteria and your fungus are what makes the structure. That structure is vital to plant health. The first things that we have to have is bacteria and fungus. But you need more than bacteria and fungus. If that's all you have, your plants aren't going to grow. So you're going to have to hire some more help or encourage some more critters to show up. And that would be your protozoa, your nematodes, your microarthropods. Trust me, in the next lesson we'll look at how all the biology interacts with each other to make the system work. So one of the most important things you need in your garden is air in the soil. Now how do we get air in the soil? Well, of course you till, you till up the soil. No, you don't. There's a lot of problems that come with tilling. One is you're gonna kill or disrupt or disturb all the life that you just tried to hire. Two, you're gonna compact your soil and then that will prevent air. If you wanna have a little change, change the way you do something. If you wanna have a big change, change the way you think about something. I put a lot of thought into this gardening and this is as far from how I grew up as you can get. But the results speak for themselves and I wanted to share that with you. So to change the way we think about it, how do you get air into the soil? And how do you prevent compaction? You let the biology do the work for you. So why is air important? Because it gives you an aerobic environment. Most of the bad things happen in an anaerobic environment. Lack of oxygen. An anaerobic environment is an environment for the bad critters. Now the bad bugs sure do like an anaerobic environment, but the garden does not. Once we've got all our micro critters in place, then you're gonna need some bigger critters. And that would be your worms, moles, voles. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, in a 10 by 12 garden, 
Voles and moles and gophers are not a good deal. In nature, out on the prairie, that's part of the food web. Now, if you really want to look at it, in nature, we're as bad for the garden as a mole or a vole or a gopher. We take those seeds and we remove them out of the environment. Of course, we're eating them, but we're still removing them out of the environment. As the top of the food chain, it is our responsibility to kind of manage what we do in our gardens. So how many critters am I going to have to hire today? The garden is kind of like looking at manufacturing. What are the things that affect the actual process? And in the garden, temperature is a big one. How many critters do I need to hire today? Well, it kind of depends on which critters for which temperature. Now, if you want the process to continue like it's supposed to throughout the year, no matter what the temperature is, you're looking at needing about 75,000 different species of bacteria in a teaspoon of soil. If you're looking at a one acre cornfield that is fully in health, that doesn't need any kind of chemicals or fertilizer, how many bacteria are you looking at? Around a million bacteria in that acre. All different species. 750,000 different kinds of funguses. And several thousand different species of nematodes, microarthropods, protozoa, and the like. Science has only identified about 5,000 different kinds of bacteria. You know, they do DNA sequences so they can tell the difference. How do we attract all those different species into your garden? Well, you grow them. I just put out a wheelbarrow full of leaves. I put some organic matter on the ground. Ground wants to be covered. So basically the start of compost. You know, that's the start of the compost pile. Compost, that's how you grow your own organisms. Now I've talked a lot about compost, but I'll go into a little greater detail. And I've actually learned a few things while I've been putting these lessons together. Now I hope you got a little something out of critters. <laughs> well, I hope you got a little something out of this lesson. Well, I sure am glad you stopped by the garden this morning. In an upcoming episode, we'll talk about what they do, how they interact with each other, and how they interact with the plant. So until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.